Stage 8. Start! Now that you know how to select lines, let's attach styles to them. This stage will be all about the stroke. And of course, I mean line stroke. Stroking, not a swimming style, and not collapsing randomly from a blood clot in my brain. Okay, that's sort of not funny. Okay, so our main focus is the freestyle line style panel. Here we can see sub tabs, and for this stage we'll focus on the stroke tab. This odd looking model is odd indeed. Let's examine it. We have a mesh with different edge mark lengths and different edge angles. Other than that, it's fairly simple. We can see these lines are broken. They are not chained. Every line is either separate or split. Without chaining, Freestyle will draw lines like it is butting up rectangles at every detected edge. Let's activate chaining. Now we can see that the broken lines are chained together. If we activate this button, if the lines are on a single object, they will chain. If they are separate objects, the lines will not be chained to lines in another object. For this chaining option, we'll look at that in a later stage. As far as stroke is concerned, 99% of the time, you'll use plain unless you are not in the 99%, in which case you'll be switching it to sketchy, which is stage 13. Splitting. Now this part looks a little scary. It has so many options, but it's rather simple. First, we have to make the line chain to be able to use this part. We've done that. One thing to note, same object will overwrite many splitting options, so let's deactivate it for now. At a glance, we see splitting by 2D angle, 2D length, material boundary, and splitting by dashed line. To make visualization clearer, we're going to activate the thickness modifier. Splitting by angle, we have two options. Minimum 2D angle splits the chain lesser than that specified angle. Now see here, the chain is broken. Max 2D angle splits the chaining greater than the specified angle. So lines with an angle larger than 120 degrees are now broken. When you have both activated, you're essentially specifying a range within which to maintain chaining, as in, between this angle and that angle, chain those strokes. Splitting by 2D length. This is simple and it splits a line at every line segment of a specified length, this length being in pixels. For this example, we command Freestyle to split the chain every 100 pixel segment. Splitting by Material Boundary As we have seen by now, Material Boundary will always be simple to understand. If there's Material Boundary, the chain is split. You can see that here. It does that and nothing else. Splitting by Dashes and Gaps This is the real deal for chain splitting. It is different from the dashed line setting, which is below. D1 is the first dashed line length, G1 is the first gap, both in pixels. We can assign different dash designs by assigning different dash and gap lengths. Pause the video and try it, it's actually kind of fun. All right, done with the difficult part. Now to the easy and fun section. Selection by length is measured in pixels. Are we noticing a pattern here? Only two options. But to get this part working, we need to turn off any splitting. Why, pray tell? Well, if you have a 100 pixel length splitting and you ask Freestyle to find a minimum length that's greater than 100 pixels, your render will be blank. Even if Freestyle calculates the mesh for hours and hours, which can be very frustrating. This part works with either chaining on or off, but chaining on is the preferred setup as the calculation is more accurate. For minimum 2D length, it will show lines longer than the specified length like this. Meanwhile, max 2D length will command Freestyle to show lines shorter than the specific length. With both turned on, we can force Freestyle to show the lines between the range of min and max length in pixels. In our example, that would be chaining between 150 to 330 pixels. Now, when are you going to use these? Ah, the answer will be when the time comes and you'll be glad that you have this knowledge. Bullets ready at your disposal. Great for the owning action. Okay, smooth sailing from here onward. Cap types. To understand this, we just have to render. Before that, let's turn off the thickness modifier. Okay, 
By default, the cap is but, which is a flat cap, or sometimes called no cap, as it neither changes nor extends at the end of the lines. The next two line caps will extend the line length. Round cap will cap the lines with a half circle that is the same diameter as the line thickness beyond the end of each stroke. This will only be visible when we have a line thick enough like in our example. It's really most useful when you want an organic line ending. Square cap extends the end of each stroke with a line thickness. Now the only bad thing about round and square caps is they extend the line length. So if you're looking for precision, use butt cap or a line thickness modifier which we'll discuss in the next stage. The last one in the stroke tab is the dashed line. As mentioned earlier, this doesn't split the line into multiple sections. It only dashes the lines with squarish kind of shapes for gaps. It's very useful for showing hidden lines or do the scissor cut lines for a brochure. And wow, we've reached the end of the stage. Usually we have a summary, but this time it's more like advice. The only time you'll be using stroke is for line chaining and dash lines. For splitting the 2D length selection, it has very few use cases. They're mainly useful in mechanical drawings. Remember, splitting by dashed line patterns is actually making new line segments based on the pattern of the pixel links you choose. Enabling dashed lines only cuts parts out of the line segments based on your pixel length pattern. But don't forget about caps. For quick and dirty, you might need a round cap. But if you're like me, you'll pay extra attention in the next stage. That's where you'll see almost infinite possibilities. Are you game? Well, good. Let's go.